G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and as you can see, I'm standing in front of this small round raised garden bed that is absolutely packed full of salad crop vegetables. And we've been harvesting from this for months now, and it's still overflowing. Well, how is this possible? Well, stick with me because I'd love to give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of salad in just one small round raised garden bed like this one. To grow salad as, well, Mickey Mouse as this, isn't that hard to do, let's be honest. But to get the most out of your salad crops, there are certain pointers and tricks and tips that you should know. So let's get into it. Tip number one, when to grow. Growing salad crops at the right time is critical to success. Crops like lettuce, radicchio, endive, rocket, some leafy types of Asian greens, and even this spinach here, which is technically, I guess, a stem crop, but we still grow it as a salad. All these salads like a temperature between 10 to 25 degrees Celsius or 50 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, you can manipulate salad crops to grow at most time of the year around the world, but generally you run into three main issues when you try to grow them out of season. And they are, firstly, the plants tend to bolt to seed quickly. Sometimes they don't even make it past seedling before bolting. And a seeding plant is not very nice to eat. The second thing is often they don't taste as good due to the stress of growing out of season, making them bitter to eat. And thirdly, pests tend to attack stressed plants more and target plants out of season because it's nature's way for bugs to finish plants off. We never need to spray our salad crops, ever. And it's very rare to see a pest at all, even a caterpillar, on our salad crops until way into the end of season when it's starting to get too hot and they're going to seed anyway. So wherever in the world you are, growing your salad crops at the right time of year for your climate should be your priority to get the best results. Tip number two, liquid fertilize. Salad crops are leafy, fast growing plants that respond really well to small amounts, but regular feeding of liquid fertilizers. In particular, those liquid feeds that are really high in nitrogen. You can use commercial liquid fertilizers as directed or make your own nitrogen rich feeds such as those from animal manures or plant-based compost teas. Whatever you use, remember these two things, small and regular. What I mean by small amounts is small amounts of fertilizer mixed in with the water. For example, if you're gonna make a manure or a compost tea, only use a small amount so that say in a watering can, you can see that the liquid is really watered down and almost see-through. Otherwise you risk the chance of burning your crops because these leaves can be quite sensitive and also pretty much killing them out of love really by giving them too much fertilizer too quickly. And what I mean by regularly is that you're giving small amounts but in regular intervals at least every two weeks, 10 to 14 days, give it a good weak feed, and that will keep them growing and healthy. Speaking of liquids, this brings me on to tip number three, water. Water is very important. Never let your salad crops dry out and start to wilt, as this can trigger bolting to seed and bitter leaves. On the other hand, salad crops grown in soil or a potting medium shouldn't be overwatered to the point of standing in stagnant water for any extended period as the tender root system and base of the plants can easily rot. An effective way to check if your salad crops are getting enough water 
is to simply get your finger, stick it into the bed, right down to about the third knuckle, and feel the dampness. If your finger comes out dry and you can't feel any dampness there at all, your bed really does need a water. Tip number four, varieties. Most varieties of salad crops grow really well. But here's just a few things to consider when you want to grow salad crops in a small bed like this. First of all, don't grow anything you don't like or you don't eat very much of. For example, we don't eat a lot of radicchio that's out there, but we eat a little bit because we like a few leaves in a mixed salad because it just gives that sharpness to a, a mixed lettuce salad that we like, but we don't like a lot of it. So we don't grow much of it. We just grow one or two plants. On the other hand, we love this oak leaf here. The purple variety is full of antioxidants. It's very tasty. So we eat a lot of it. And that's why we've got several of those plants here. Plus it's an excellent grower. Grow several different varieties. You soon get bored of the same or the one type of salad. We grow a mixture of salad varieties to make an interesting salad mix. Grow varieties that will realistically grow well in your climate. For instance, harting lettuces like iceberg, they don't grow too well here as the cold season is too short. So instead, we grow fast harting varieties like this butter crunch here. They grow faster, they're not as susceptible to rot or heart rot as the icebergs are. And so it's more appropriate to grow a few of them in the bed. Don't overfill your bed with the harting varieties of lettuces. Otherwise, you'll find that they'll all mature at the same time. And when you harvest them, they actually leave gaps in your bed, which you can fill by replanting. But in a sized bed like this, I recommend one or two harting varieties and the rest loose leaf. Tip number five, harvest regularly. Salad crops respond really well to regular harvesting. What it does is not only provides you with food, of course, but it staves off the maturing process. It stimulates extra growth and it slows down the plant going to seed, which means more food, more crop. Even if you're not eating it, harvest your crops by giving them a trim just a few times a week or more and store them in the fridge crisper for later. Having said that, try to fill any larger gaps created by harvesting, say, the harting varieties by replacing them with new successively sown plants raised as seedlings to utilise maximum space and keep weeds from competing with the plants themselves. At the end of the season, what I do is I stop harvesting and just let the plants grow their natural course to seed. This does several things. It feeds the bees, other insects, and also those seeds with salad crops are usually true to type, which means you can save them and grow the exact same plants next season. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed my five top tips on how to grow a ton of salad in just one small round raised garden bed. If you did, give me a big green thumbs up and share this video all around the internet. That'd be great. If you've got any questions, leave them below. Also, if you've got comments that you'd like to make on your tips for growing a lot of salad or other tips in general, whatever, whack them down below. Don't forget to visit the website selfsufficientme.com and also subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching and thank you very much for all the support that you guys have given me lately. Bye for now.